Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 135 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. So the last few episodes of Camera Position have dealt with the way in which we tell our story, the way we get our story out into the world. And we've looked at uh, creating print-on-demand publications. We've looked at using uh, digital books to be able to get our work out there. And now I would like to take a look at the idea of digital storytelling. Digital storytelling takes that ancient art of oral storytelling and engages a group of technical tools that uh, take personal ideas and put them together with images and potentially graphics and music and perhaps other sound and mix them together with the author's own voice. That voice, your own voice, is an important part of the digital story. And a lot of people uh, are concerned that they don't have a very good voice, but golly, your voice is your voice. And your voice is the one that should tell your stories. So I've created a digital story as an example uh, for this podcast, and it's uh, out there on YouTube and on Vimeo, and it is linked uh, to the Vimeo uh, version in uh, the cameraposition.com podcast page. And it's also in the app. For those of you who are using the Camera Position app, you can just see the digital story right there in the app. And it's a story about a weekend visit that I had as a, as a great opportunity to visit a Frank Lloyd Wright house in Ohio uh, and spend a, a few days and nights there. And when I was there, I recognized that I was making photographs of this interesting house and learning a little bit about its history and photographing around the environs and recognized that there was potential here for a small group of images, a small body of work, not a huge number of photographs, but just a really small number of pictures that had a kind of cohesion to them because, of course, they were all being shot in the same spot. Uh, Also had a kind of an interesting storyline because it was a Frank Lloyd Wright house built in 1959. So that had a a sort of interesting resonance in terms of what I might talk about within the story context. And it it was also a fodder for a number of good images. Now, what I was fascinated by was the idea that I don't know that these photographs would necessarily do well when printed and matted and hung on a wall in a gallery or in someone's living room or a public library or wherever else I might get uh, some space to put these images on the wall. But telling the story of this house, telling the story of my involvement in just spending a few days in this house and what it felt like, I thought lent itself well to the digital story format. Digital storytelling takes these images and puts them together with sound. In this case, I just use music and then my voice. And what we use for this is some sort of software, usually something that has a a kind of video editing basis. Final Cut Pro is what I use on the Macintosh. Uh, Many people use iMovie because it comes free on the Macintosh. And there are a number of uh, different kinds of video editing platforms for the Windows world. Not being a Windows user, I don't have a lot of experience with them. However, I know that an application called ProShow Gold has some great potential as a digital storytelling mechanism to get images and audio and put them together and create some sort of uh, visual video uh, creation. The process for this is first, obviously, to collect images. Uh, Collect images, and in this case, I was collecting images really with the idea in mind of making a digital story, thinking through the process of what kinds of images I might make, uh, having an image that I could use as a sort of uh, entry image, uh, an establishing shot that told us a little bit about what the house looked like and uh, where it was and so forth would be a useful image, and then detail images, and then a number of images that I made around the outside of the structure as well. So collecting images and defining what the topic is for the digital story is important. Uh, And I got home and edited through those images in Apple's Aperture and selected out the few images that I was going to use for my digital story. The next thing I did was I sat down after sort of editing through those pictures and I created a short script. 
In this case, it really doesn't have to be very long. This was a story that ended up being about a minute and 37 seconds long, so you can see that the script doesn't have to be terribly comprehensive. But I sat down and wrote out a script, and, and I started out simply by writing about my impressions of being in this place and living in this house for a little bit, and also uh, a little bit of the history of the house itself, and went through and just sort of wrote down a script and edited it down to be something something that uh, would read well, that I could read aloud well, but also that would kind of have a beginning and a middle and an end uh, that uh, relayed my impressions of being in this place and, and dealing with uh, living in this Frank Lloyd Wright house. So that was, the, uh, that was the first part, was creating the images and then creating a script. And then uh, the next part was importing those elements into my digital storytelling platform. In my case, I used Final Cut Pro. I just could have, could have easily used uh, iMovie, uh, but I've been trying to teach myself more and more about Final Cut Pro, a much more uh, comprehensive software than iMovie. And some of you may, on the Windows platform, be interested in using something like Premiere Elements or Premiere Pro uh, as a video editing software, but I've uh, uh, linked you to Pro Show Gold in the Camera Position podcast page because I, I know that that is a pretty uh, terrific platform for editing together images and sound. I then looked for a piece of music that I thought might might help support the, the mechanism of the story itself, something that was unobtrusive but uh, pleasant sounding. And uh, my friends at Triple Scoop Music helped me out with uh, a great piece of music that I could use and uh, that sort of formed a nice background bed for the story that I was going to tell. Not only did I write the script then, but I also got the images into the software and then also uh, created or found rather in this case some music that would support the effort. Once I got all of that together, Essentially, because I had recorded the audio portion ahead of time uh, using uh, GarageBand on the Mac, but really any kind of audio recording software can work. And I have a, a nice microphone here at uh, Camera Position HQ, uh, but you could conceivably use the built-in microphone on your computer, or even better, uh, go out to uh, the store and, and get an inexpensive USB microphone. It'll up the quality quite a bit and give you a much better result. So once you've got the audio together, and once you've got the images together, the next bit is really just about sequencing the images and figuring out a way to get those images into a sequence that supports your audio, the audio supporting the images themselves, and tells your story in a sequential way. It is a bit different process than what we've been looking at with books, uh, e-books or printed publication type books. It is a different process in that the presentation is very linear, very much about the first picture, then the next picture, then the next picture, but unlikely that the viewer is going to go back from picture number one to picture number six and then return to picture number four. So you really have to think about the sequencing of the images and how that sequencing of the images uh, begins to tell your story. Because of the audio that I recorded for this story, first of all, uh, that was really the first piece of content that I created uh, back in the studio, uh, I, I kind of had a, a sequence of images built into the audio that I was uh, that I'd already previously recorded. So I started out talking about the house a little bit and about its history, and then uh, talked a little bit about the landscape that the house uh, both uh, uh, has a view of and also kind of participates in. Uh, so uh, that helped me sequence the images. And then finally, what I did after I was all satisfied with the sequencing of the images, with the titling of the the presentation so that I was uh, not only naming the thing and talking a little bit about what it was, but also uh, I wanted to give credit to my friends at Triple Scoop Music. And of course, I wanted to give authoring credit to myself for uh, not only the, uh, the images, but also the voiceover text. So once that was all completed, I then used the built-in tools built into Final Cut Pro to export that video up to Vimeo and to YouTube. I have accounts at both of those places. They're both free, uh, so it's really easy to get the content up online 
And once it's online, uh, just like a lot of these other products that we've been talking about, once it is online, it is in front of lots and lots of people. So you're able to get that word out in a way that you never really would be able to with a gallery exhibition. This is why I'm so excited about these kinds of technologies, uh, the idea of print-on-demand books or electronic books. Uh, and thank you, by the way, for all of those of you who have downloaded the uh, MagCloud piece and those of you who have downloaded the piece that I produced with iBooks author uh, platform. And uh, hopefully some of you will take a look at this digital storytelling project and become inspired to make your own. Uh, really, in fact, that's what I'm interested in having you do. I'm interested in seeing what you come up with for making your own projects. Uh, I was thrilled to uh, get in the mail the other day uh, a, a wonderful blurb book from uh, a podcast listener, Lewis. So thanks, Lewis, for sending along this beautiful book of a of work that he had done in the city of Venice in Italy. Uh, of course, obviously, that uh, attracted me. The subject matter attracted me. But he put together a really beautiful, beautifully sequenced book of his work done in Italy. And I'm thrilled to see those kinds of products being made. Uh, and really interested in the kind of work you're doing. The beautiful part about doing ebooks or this digital storytelling project is that once you complete it, you can post the results online and uh, get feedback from other people, and more importantly, just get that work in front of other people's eyeballs. So if you do create a digital story or a print-on-demand publication or an e-publication, go to my podcast's Facebook page, and I'll link to that off of cameraposition.com and also uh, in the app. Uh, take a look at that page and post some links to the content that you're creating. I'm really interested in seeing what it is that podcast listeners are doing and hearing from them in terms of seeing the products that they're creating. So try out this digital storytelling idea. Uh, think about the sequencing of images. Uh, the beautiful part is there's uh, no cost in experimenting. You can try as many times as you want and eventually whittle it down to the one final piece that you want to publish out there on the internet. And then uh, once you've got that, I'd really be interested in seeing what it is that you've come up with using your voice, perhaps using a little bit of music background, and also your images, obviously. Your images of a place or a person or a thing that matters to you, because the best stories are personal stories, stories that, in fact, uh, have some sort of resonance within your own ideas. So give it a try and let me know how it works out, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography.